The scripture that came to mind, it's in Romans 8, and it says, the mind governed by the flesh is at war with God. And I just started to think about that, like, what would it look like to be at war with God? <laughs> and <laughs> this one, oh I thought my was, gosh. <laughs> if you're at war with God, the solution is don't try to win. Like, don't try to fight. You're going to lose. And the longer you fight, the more resources you waste and the more time you waste. Like, the only hope you have of survival in a war with God is surrender. Welcome to another episode, episode four of the Jesus, Jesus, and more Jesus podcast. Mm. We're getting after it. Yes, Dude, sir. We have done three episodes. This is our fourth. Pretty, three already. Uh, I'm pretty stoked. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I'm like, you know, this is going well. I love it. Yeah. I like that. It kind of keeps me thinking about um, how to communicate the scriptures. And when I'm reading the Bible during the week, I'm just constantly kind of trying to think of ways to communicate the things that are speaking to me Mm -hmm. so that I can try to say it in a good way when we're sitting in the chair here. Well, it's like when God, something, when God gives you something, you know, that is like, so like hits your heart and revolutionary, you just want to tell everybody about it. Yeah. You know, now we get to do that, you know? (laughs) So, yeah, it's hard because like it it usually happens in a moment. Like you have this revelation, you're like, oh my gosh. (laughs) And then... (laughs) And then when it's time to say it to somebody else, it yeah. almost is like, what happened? Like, I lost it. I lost it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But uh, anyway, what, one thing I thought we could do in this episode is, um, you know, I was watching the last episodes, not, well, not all of them, but the la- episode three, the last one we did. And there's certain things that like, I think we said that were good, mm-hmm. but maybe they could be a little more clear. Yeah. And uh so one of the things that stuck out to me was, or even like could be corrected or expounded upon. And I asked the question in the last one, you know, why do we have such a hard time fearing the Lord? Mm-hmm. And, you know, like we, we do tend to show other guys respect, you know, we wouldn't disrespect some other guy, but we do disrespect God mm-hmm. a lot of times by our actions and uh you said something that was right on you know it's because of the fall it's because of our sinful nature mm-hmm. but uh when i was watching it the the scripture that came to mind was the it's in romans 8 and it says for the carnal mind uh or the mind governed by the flesh is enmity against god or the mind governed by the flesh is at war Mm -hmm. with God and I just started to think about that like my mind or my actions or my life when I'm governed by the flesh is at war with God Mm -hmm. and I don't think when I was struggling with pornography I thought about it like that like I'm at war with God right now Mm -hmm. and uh, I think one of the things that you know, I started looking online and uh, I was typing in, I actually like tried to use AI illustrators to do this, but I'll show you some photos that I found. But I just like Googled like, what would it look like to be at war with God? <laughs> and uh, <laughs> that was one that came up. And uh, this one. Oh I my was gosh. <laughs> That's ridiculous. There's another one that this one isn't as funny, but yeah, uh, I was just trying to like, I was trying to use AI to like create an image of like a little peanut trying yeah. to fight like a massive, strong being who's like very nice looking. Yeah. Like I was typing in like very kind face, but huge and powerful. Yeah. And, uh, but like the idea of a human being being at war with God the thing that that started to make a lot of sense is like if you're at war with god the solution is 
don't try to win. Mm-hmm. Like, don't try to fight. Yeah. You're going to lose. Mm-hmm. And the longer you fight, the more resources you waste mm-hmm. and the more time you waste. Like, the only hope you have of survival in a war with God, you know, is surrender. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting because at first you don't necessarily even think about it as, like you said before, you never really thought about it being as going to war against god like you you view it as more of like i'm going to war you know or i'm just like screwing up by myself like it doesn't affect anybody Mm -hmm. or anything but in reality it's affecting your relationship with god because now you're putting something else in front of god and the more that you choose to do something that god tells us not to do Mm -hmm. when you when you do something that someone specifically tells you not to do you're kind of being disobedient and going to war against what they have to say, Mm -hmm. you know? And so it's interesting that you say that, but, um, yeah, I think, I think at that, at the point when I was really struggling, you know, I would also say that, you know, I wasn't totally sure that God was real. You know, you would Mm -hmm. say, you know, it was bad for your relationship with God, Mm -hmm. but, For me, I think I was, I was hurry hearing all these things in church. I had grown up hearing about all the miracles and all the, you know, I I would go to services and see things happen. But I think the idea of God that like, there's this creator who made me has a plan for my life. The, The claims that the Bible makes about who God is. And what he's doing are radical claims, Mm -hmm. you know, like, and I, maybe I'm like a Thomas type person or like I have like a doubting sort of of tendency. Yeah. Yeah. But I would say that like my understanding of God was like, you do the right thing and good things will happen, you know, Mm -hmm. or like you do these sort of religious things and he blesses you or good things happen. And I think there were just some things, roadblocks that happened in life, like, you know, just not moving forward in my job. Mm -hmm. You know, I was kind of making the same amount of money, working insanely hard, you know, just like grinding, grinding, grinding. Yeah. And just feeling like I'm not getting anywhere. And at the same time, you know, thinking like, well, maybe this is okay if, if I s- struggle like this at my job, maybe I'll like meet the girl of my dreams soon. And like, it'll, it'll make up for everything, but yeah, then like, it'll pay off. Or yeah. Whatever. But then yeah. that didn't happen for years and years. And so I got pretty bitter at God. Mm-hmm. I mean, I got pretty bitter in general. I wouldn't say I was bitter at God. Like I remember, um, this is just a story that kind of like popped in my head but there was this one time so I had this office when I was editing videos and right across the parking lot outside the office I was on the second floor I could see into like the back patio of a bar there was like a a restaurant with a bar in the back Mm -hmm. and uh, they would like show films and just like people drinking and having fun and there would be so many times I'd be in my edit bay you know working on something and every time i took off my headphones all i heard was like people laughing and having a good time right like they're drinking watching movie you know people having a good time and i would like take off my headphones and like over time i just developed this like feeling of like i have chosen the wrong path like or something like i I'm so, I so wish I could just leave this room and go have some fun. Mm -hmm. Like I wish I could, you know, go be with my friends and have fun and drink. And I remember one night, um, like I had worked really hard on an episode, a TV show, one of the producers that we were working with, you know, I probably was working like through the night at this point. Like when things got really difficult, I would like sleep during the day. And work through the night because there's like no distractions, right? It's like, yeah, it's dark outside. I'm not going to do anything anyway. I'm just going to work through the night. 
and I had finished the episode and like the producer like met with me one morning and she was like, uh, you know, I know you're working on this episode right here. The next, the one that next one that is to get done, but the last one you did when you turned it in, like these are the notes that they want you to fix. Mm. Cause like we have a client we're turning it into. You always had to like fix things. And I just like was so discouraged at this point in my life. And this producer like knew I had grown up in church and been a Christian and she had also, and like, she's like, you know, Nate, God will never give you anything that you can't handle. (laughs) And I just like looked at her straight in the face and I said, Jamie, there is no God. I was like, Hmm. totally, I had totally kind of lost all faith right you know mm-hmm. um and i bring that up because yeah talking about being enemies of god like i i was so bitter i had kind of like felt like this idea that there's a loving god paying attention to me mm-hmm. and caring about me mm-hmm. i had like that's not real you know yeah And, uh, after I had sort of had that experience where I like got on my knees and God like met me in my bedroom, Mm -hmm. you know, I started reading through the Bible and, um, you know, like last episode, we're talking about finding your contentment in Christ. So I'm reading through the Bible and I get to the book of John, you know, I'm reading through new Testament and, uh, in John chapter one, Jesus, uh, meets Nathaniel. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm reading, and when Nathaniel, uh, when Philip comes to Nathaniel and says, "We found the Messiah," Nathaniel says, "Is there anything good that can come out of Nazareth, like Jesus of Nazareth?" And Nathaniel says, "Is there anything good that can come out of Nazareth?" And Philip's like, "Come and see." Mm-hmm. And so Nathaniel's walking towards Jesus, and Jesus says, "Behold, uh, an Israelite in whom there is no deceit." And then Nathaniel says, "How do you know me?" And Jesus says. Bef- I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. And as soon as I read that, like I'm on my knees, I'm reading the Bible, I'm in my bedroom. As soon as I read that, I saw myself in that office editing in the middle of the night. And like, it was like, I knew Jesus was like sitting behind me, watching me like get through probably the lowest one of the lowest nights of my life right and um i just uh it always makes me emotional to tell that story because at the moment when i was saying that he didn't exist he was there yeah and uh Mm -hmm. yeah it's kind of like reminds me of that other scripture where it says you know while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Like while I was still uh, lost, mm-hmm. you know, he was making a way. Um, but I digress. <laughs> That's a really good story. Yeah. You know, and it's like, it's a depiction of, you know, someone who was raised in the church as, as a pastor's son. Mm-hmm. you know you know working in the real world and going through real life struggles and experiencing that doubt like a lot of people do and i'm just as guilty of that doubt as the next person you know um like my my story is you know i left home and i went to college and uh instead of living out my own faith at home, I was living out a persona of somebody who people wanted me to be as a pastor's son, you know, and the moment that I wasn't that in the community that people didn't know me, you know, I didn't turn to God, you know, I didn't turn, I wasn't even really turning to God in those moments (laughs) when I was home. Like, it was more like, okay, like, what can I do to grow, like, the numbers in the youth group? What can I do to be the best PK, 
you know, not really, what can I do to further my relationship with God? What can I, I was always about like my persona with other people. And so then the one time when that didn't matter, my, my persona didn't matter. And my roommates had that same, you know, really like attitude. Uh, it just went downhill, you mm-hmm. know, and I stopped turning to God about things. I didn't talk to God about things. I didn't talk to anybody wise about anything, you know, and then I didn't read my Bible and mm-hmm. I got so low to a point, you know, where I was just drinking for comfort and I was partying for comfort. And I just remember, you know, being in my room uh, after my 19th birthday, and which I don't really remember, um, mm-hmm. And like just breaking down and just being like, I don't know who you are, God. I don't know uh, what you want me to do, but I know that this life is so empty. And it was at that moment, it was like, as I was crying out to God, I was also like kind of blaming God for like abandoning me because Mm -hmm. like growing up, my family had been Christian and um, like I didn't necessarily feel God personally on me, but I felt him throughout my family and like the events that went on there. And so like, I was like, okay, so why does God care about my family members? Why doesn't he care about me? Why has he let me go this far down? Like if there was a God that wouldn't have happened, you know? And so at this moment of crying out, I was also doubting at the moment of crying out. (laughs) So it was at a point where I was just like, okay, God, if you're real, if you really care about me, if you really want me to do, something with my life Mm. that isn't just making me depressed all the time you have to basically like put it in front of my face and then he did you know he put you know people in front of my face that showed me how ignorant i was being you Mm. know and how selfish in my thinking i was being as well you know it's because it's like you only think about yourself when you're when you're not like a christian you only think about like you know what's the worst things that i've been through you know like why why does my life suck you know and then you start blaming other factors besides yourself you know for your failures when in reality you're just choosing to put things above god instead of actually putting god above the other things and putting your trust in him and then it's you know look at where we are now you know we both had those you know like rock bottom moments you know where we were like in complete yeah complete like denial of god and it was like Mm. but now when we turn to god and looking back in that moment you can see okay god literally by his own hand through other people and through other events picked me up out of that darkest spot in my entire life and his through other people and through events that have happened raised me up to the person that i am now and now we're talking about it on a podcast in front of everybody, mm-hmm. you know. So it's just a testimony to like, you mm-hmm. know, our like our faith and our belief in God and the uh, like the miracles that God can do, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, definitely the miracles God can do because I think you know maybe I I'm a stubborn person. Maybe there's some of that in you too. But like, there's something I think where I think I had to be reminded. I had to, I had to be shown like people would say like, you're a sinner, you're, Mm -hmm. you're selfish, you're prideful, Nate. Like I heard that a lot growing up or, you know, or in sermons, but I had to like see it Mm -hmm. myself. I had to see it kind of play out in my life and Mm -hmm. like the actions maybe, which is kind of a bummer that I can't just like learn from somebody else. But, um, maybe now that I've seen it in myself, I'm able to, you know, there is a scripture that says, you know, by the fear of the Lord, sin is avoided. Mm -hmm. You know, like once you have that, you know, heart change to where you really do recognize that, like if I operate in my flesh, I'm just going to make an enemy out of the most powerful thing, person Mm -hmm. in the universe. Uh, then you start to go, okay, <laughs> let's watch out. Let's get to know what he says. Yeah. 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 But, um, yeah, I mean, 
Yeah, I think, you know, in your story, it seems that way as well, where you kind of had to... Definitely. And I mean, it's that way with most things in life, too, because I remember growing up, you know, my parents would, like, warn me before they knew... But like this is before they knew like I struggled with porn. With porn, this is before I even struggled with porn. Mm-hmm. They would say, like you can't control it. You can't control pornography. Mm-hmm. And so when I was starting, I was like, I can control it. I can moderate it. I can, mm-hmm. you know, do it in moderation, which is total, you know, baloney <laughs> because it's like okay, you're gonna moderate your own sin. Yeah. Okay, that's r- ridiculous. You know. And then it mm-hmm. was the same thing with alcohol my dad like my family set a really good like mm. precedent and like standard of alcohol in our family that was healthy mm-hmm. and um when you know I, and they were like there are dangers to alcohol well i had never really seen those dangers and the detrimental effects to them mm-hmm. so then when i was exposed to it without limitation for the first time i had to push those boundaries and see how far i could get without actually getting hurt but then obviously you get hurt you know you cross the line Mm -hmm. you you make stupid mistakes you know yeah and i was just that ignorant you know young Mm -hmm. guy still a young guy (laughs) still ignorant but (laughs) i was that really ignorant young guy weak in his faith that decided to push all the boundaries and Mm -hmm. be ignorant to everybody else's wisdom you know that was telling me like you need to be careful of these things when you leave home and i was like yeah whatever (laughs) you know yeah i mean it's a really wise thing that your parents said the way they said it you can't control this because um you know that that scripture even says the mind governed by the flesh Mm -hmm. like you don't think we don't i didn't think about pornography really as an addiction or as something that had power over me Mm -hmm. until like a few years of and then even then you justify it like Mm -hmm. i could stop at any time yep right (laughs) yeah that's but that's the famous line i can stop when i want to but you can't (laughs) yeah the reality is you really and i think you know this is where you could get into the whole like spiritual warfare thing you could talk about like the way our brains get warped by it but and like the way addiction warps your brain but like you know really it goes back to like you're a slave you're being controlled by this you can't control it like your parents said and yeah Yeah. the only hope going back to the beginning is the only hope really in a war against god is you got to look for a way to surrender and give up and not fight so Mm -hmm. but um switching gears Mm -hmm. another thing that i think you said and maybe you for sure said it last episode, but maybe in a few episodes is that um, I just kind of wanted to talk about what does it mean for a guy to be a leader? Mm. Um, I think that it's kind of a hot topic. (laughs) Yeah, uh, (laughs) definitely issue because, you know, gender roles are something that even in the church are hotly, uh, fought about, you know, should women be pastors and all that kind of stuff, but we don't even have to go there. I I would just say like the things, some of the things that I have kind of come to believe about it is, you know, what does it mean to be a leader? Uh, Mm. the first word that comes up is to be a servant, right? So Jesus says the greatest will be your servant. You know, Mm -hmm. the one who leads will be like a slave. So there's like service. And one of the other things that I think of, at, and, and particularly, particularly with regards to men, and that is like you need to be confrontational with evil. That's mm-hmm. what the leader does. The leader, like kind of like the tip of the spear, like you're looking for the ways where evil evil spirits sin are trying to threaten you threaten your family threaten your home and you confront rather than run away Mm -hmm. from i mean that's what the shepherd's job is right he's supposed to lead the sheep to like the good pasture and he's supposed to fight off confront wolves Mm -hmm. fight the bears fight the any sort of like threat to the flock And I think, you know, 
I mean, that's, I mean, yes, that's the, that's also like the standard in our normal world today, not just spiritual. Like, for example, take the military, Mm -hmm. right? You have leaders, you know, that gather intel, research the enemy, identify the weak points in, in their own unit or whatever, and basically use those to guard their themselves and protect those who they love against Mm -hmm. you know whatever evil it is Mm -hmm. you know and so that that's not just the standard spiritually that's the standard you know in In our world world. today as well and i mean it like you said like you said it's about service i mean that was originally what man was created for in the beginning god created adam and the purpose of adam was to take care of the garden he gave him in charge of the garden to Mm -hmm. work the garden right it was to work it to take care of it to serve it you know for something to take care about so that is like you hit it on the nail on the head service is the is biblical leadership that is basically what it is that's what the example we see in christ Mm -hmm. you know he washes his disciples feet he goes and basically serves other people you know and he does it's all service based it's not like i'm the king of heaven i'm you know the son of god you have to Mm -hmm. listen to me now i have all power and everything he does but that's not the way he goes about it you know what i mean he doesn't come to destroy the roman army he comes to present a new covenant and a new way that people can Mm -hmm. you know worship him you know it's all through service so yeah and i think you know this it has to be a guy's probably hear this all the time like you need to serve Mm-hmm. Right. And, and immediately you're just like eyes glaze over like, okay, you know, <laughs> put my body on the line, you know? Yeah. But I mean, I think somehow you have to combine that idea with, you know, there's something, there's something, you know, I, I guess to, to like pull off of like some of the stuff Jordan Peterson says, but like you can get an adventure and a purpose out of serving can result in you having a purpose having uh an adventure in your life i think you know for me uh, quickly after i started you know walking with christ i got invited to make some christian films and like it was a ton of work it was you know a huge amount of effort um but it was also this sort of like adventure in it. Like I knew that I had a gift to do it. I knew that the the years that I had spent like away from God, like learning the skill of making videos, uh, I could immediately put to a very good purpose. And that purpose being telling testimonies about the way God was moving around the world, the way that missions and, and churches and all these things um, I mean, it was, it was a labor of love. It wasn't like I was getting paid money, you know, big money to do it or anything. That's ministry for you. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was, yeah, it was service, but it was also like, I remember every time I did it, I would just hear these wild stories about God moving and, and mm-hmm. it was a way of, you know, kind of refreshing myself and getting to see the world and getting to grow in my skills, getting, learning how to direct, learning how to go out and shoot stuff, you know, in a better way. And so, um, and I think, you know, also like getting married, Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. That's like, if you're going to get married, you're, you're committing to serve and lay down your life for your wife. Yep. Right. And, um, I think you can speak on this a lot more than I can. And uh, yes and no, but I mean, like you could say, you know, I, I think there's, there was a tendency when I was single to really see every like per- potential wife or girl that I talked to for, you know, how is this going to like benefit me? You know, mm. is, but ultimately in marriage, your role is going to be, how can I help my wife thrive? Yeah. How can I create an environment where she's going to succeed? 
and really your needs and and wants have to be secondary mm-hmm. so um you don't get married because you shouldn't get married because you know you think it's going to complete you you should get married because you want to share and you want to give and you want to uh you know yeah share and get give to somebody else make somebody else's life better yeah. and um you know and and it's something you think god's involved in definitely so um mm-hmm. yeah any thoughts on that no i mean you you hit it pretty well on the head in terms of in terms of that um i can't think of anything that i would add i think i think one of the things that you can for any guys that are uh you know dating or in a relationship yeah one of the revelations i had about leadership in marriage that you know everybody's you know every girl appreciates when you plan a date yeah right like when you take initiative put put effort into coming up with the restaurant coming up with something romantic to do yeah and uh you know after you do it for a while after you do it for a while there's maybe um it gets more difficult to to plan like mm-hmm. you know your life you know your relationship becomes more familiar it's not like you're you know trying to impress this person for the first time you've already kind of like pulled all your tricks out and like you're out of tricks and like you're like dang okay what are we going to do for a date now it's we've been married 7 years you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah and uh one of the revelations I had was like, you know, I feel very loved when something happens in my life that I knew God planned. Oh, definitely. That's when I feel the most loved by God, definitely. Right. You know, it's when he like identifies the need, you know, and then just. But it's almost like you knew, you know, like, oh, okay, like the only way that God could have done this is if he had set it up. Yeah. Years ago. Yeah. Like, you know, the anchor house, me coming here to to work at the anchor house, like, man, never thought I would be living in Kauai yeah. working at a Bible school. I was in Santa Monica working in like a little dungeon cell for years. Yeah. You know, I thought I would, I don't know. I, I kind of well, there's, had, had no idea. But yeah. there's a lot of things too. Like, yeah. I wouldn't have been here at all if I didn't go to Bible college. You know, Mm -hmm. Bible college is what gave me the passion to come here, you know, and help with the students. You wouldn't have been able to minister or relate to guys surfing if you never surfed, Mm -hmm. you know. So that was something that God put in your life for this specific reason, you know. So that and others, but like at the same time, it's like Mm -hmm. the way that God's designed your life, you know, there's unique things that have happened in your life, in your testimony that lead for a purpose for this exact moment, for the reason why you're here. Mm-hmm. You know, like all the hardships that you went through grew you in certain areas so that you could be the best anchor house principal there ever was or will be. So <laughs> <laughs> Don't go there. But uh, yeah, I mean, I remember when I first got saved, I had this like, I read that scripture, you know, like ask and you shall receive. Mm-hmm. So one of the things I asked for was a pickup truck, a white Toyota Tacoma pickup truck with a camper shell. <laughs> I wrote down like surf spots that I wanted to surf, like my bucket list. Uh-huh. And yeah, when I met Allegra, she drove a white Toyota Tacoma <laughs> pickup truck <laughs> with a camper shell. First time I came here with her, we were like, she showed me this surf spot <clears throat> that was exactly like this other surf spot that I had put on my list. It was like a very, it's a very similar wave. And I was like, bro, I'm like crying, <laughs> walk, walking up the beach. Anyway, what all of that to say, you can love your wife. You can lead your wife. You can lead your family through planning. To me, that was like a revelation that like planning is like this very spiritual thing. Yeah, it is. And it's, and it's. It takes serving and discipline and all those things. But also, it takes the Holy Spirit, you know? Like, if we try to plan things on our own merit, you know, without the mm-hmm. discernment or the wisdom from the Holy Spirit, our plans tend to be yeah 
kind of garbage. <laughs> yeah. You have to hold them loosely, but like you, it helps to put the effort into it. And I think he Definitely. meets you as you're moving. Definitely. You can't just say like, oh, the Holy Spirit's going to do it and not try. Yeah. No, I mean, you're a vessel. Mm-hmm. You're a vessel and that God has given you the Holy Spirit to dwell inside of. Mm-hmm. So a vessel doesn't do nothing. You know, a vessel acts and, you mm-hmm. know, works in tandem in a symbiotic relationship yeah. with the Holy Spirit. So in this episode, let's try and sum it up. I'm going to, I'll try and sum it up. Uh, if you are operating in your flesh, you're God's enemy. Mm-hmm. And the right thing to do is to look for a way to surrender. And I think, you know, going back to like what I said about confronting evil in your home, in your life, if you learn how to surrender to God and confront whatever evil is going on in your own heart and mind, that is going to prepare you to be a leader because, you know, it's interesting to me that Jesus, you know, in the Garden of Gethsemane gets on his knees and he says, you know, not my will, but your will be done. Like he's fighting in prayer for, you know, the resolve to go to the cross. He's fighting in prayer against any sort of like temptation to like not go through with it. Right. Mm-hmm. So um, you got to learn how to pray and pray you know, in such a way that you really do, uh, confront evil things, Mm -hmm. confront the evil that's in you. Cause that's, what's going to, yeah, that's what's going to say that. That's what's going to, uh, prepare you to lead your family. Um, and I would also say, um, you know, plan for other people, make plans for other people in order to show them love. Yeah. Um, that's the way that God shows love for us. And, uh, you know, you're never so low that God can't save you. Never. I did a lot of talking on this one. That's but... good. I loved your story. Okay. It was making me emotional. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was good. I really enjoyed it. Well, on that note, maybe we should go surf. Maybe we should. I agree. Yeah. Well, thanks for joining us on the Jesus, Jesus, and more Jesus podcast. We are sponsored by Anchor House School of the Bible here on Kauai, Hawaii. And uh, yeah, go go see the website. Come join us. Um, it's a men- We're a men- ministry of Kauai Christian Fellowship as well, so... Um, you can support the podcast by just giving to the church and, uh, like, and subscribe, hit the bell button. Yeah. And if you have any questions for Peter or I, uh, you can comment those, or if you want to reach out to us on Instagram, we can put our handles there so you can do a more DM question or something along those lines. Yeah, absolutely. Well, right on. All right. Thanks, Nate. Thanks, Pete.